and let's hope we don't get any kind of crazy feedback. All right, so we are going to look at EXS 24. So the first thing I want you to do is go to our student drive media sampling, and here's two um, audio waveforms that you can use to go through this tutorial with me. They're not the best thing in the world, but it'll do what I want you to do. So I'm going to put those down to my desktop so that I have them, but please go in there and drag those Trifon drums and Trifon growl. Okay, so go to <laughs> and Studio? student media sampling. So like, and because we're going to bring those in, and I'm going to show you ways that we can work with them in software. Student drive, media folder, sampling, and grab those two. And just easier to bring them to the desktop because then we'll be able to drag them in from there. We could drag them from where they are, but I want you to have them. So I'll wait. I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. So what we're going to do now, what you were able to do with sampling this previous way was to change tempo and not change pitch. And what you're going to see in this example is that we're going to be able to change pitch, but we're also going to have tempo that's going to change as well. And then we'll look at ways to do it in a third way later on. So um, you'll see what I mean as we move forward here. Yep, student, media, sampling. And those two files. And um, this is called what? What is this chapter that we're? Um, you can think of it as EXS24. It's the name EXS. E For some reason, everything in Logic is is E for probably E Magic from when it was the old days, and the X is for X, and then the S is for Sampler. <laughs> Because we have EFM and we have ES1 and it's like a we have like a synth and we have an FM and we have a you know so I don't know what the X stands for but definitely the E is the E magic part because they used to own this software and then Apple bought them so do we have those are we good so what I'm gonna do what I've done here is I created a new logic project and I created an audio track. That's the first thing that I want to do here. And then what I'm going to do is go to my Finder window, to my desktop, and I'm going to drag in Trifon drums to that track. Uh, don't import tempo info. I think it did that for mine because I did this before. If you get that warning, don't import tempo data because we won't need it. So I'll wait. I'll wait till we get there. What, sorry, what's that? How many tracks do you need? Just one. Just want you to create one. And you wouldn't really need to even create a track because when you drag in the, the clip, it will create the track, but Logic makes you create a track. You can't have an empty project to start. Now, I'm going to save this right away just to get you in the habit of not working without saving. So I'm going to call this EXS24 and my initials. Probably Wait, I should probably do it the way we su we're supposed to do it name Chris underscore EXS24 and I'm gonna save it to my student drive or better yet to David's student drive <laughs> oh I'm not sure what you mean what's the tricky way to not drag Okay. 
I didn't say to import anything but the drums. Now I'm saving my project. Save your project. Make sure, look here on the, the, the save, make sure EXS instruments and samples is checked. I check everything. I don't need movie file because we don't have a movie. So file save, make sure you're doing that. Otherwise the samples you create will stay on the local computer, which is not what we want to do. Your student folder, everything but movies. And save it to what? Package or folder? Package, Package is the best because it's one little, looks like one little so file. Okay. 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 Make sure that you are in a student folder, don't just record it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say song or project or project. Well, mm -hmm. I wouldn't worry because we're going to. A drum loop, obviously. If I do my command U, just a drum loop. That's all we have there. So this is my first way of dealing with this loop and, and to get it to sample. I'm going to wait till we're all ready to go. Now I'm going to move it to the beginning because it is metered. You notice it's an eight bar phrase. So it is metered to be perfect. If I was bringing in something else, like we did before, and I wanted it to be of a certain length, I don't necessarily have to line it to the grid, but I'd have to use the technique we did before to at least select an eight bar, four bar, one beat, whatever I'm selecting to put into my sampler. So all I'm doing for you here is I have a eight measure phrase so I don't have to adjust it. But if I wanted four, I could do that. But I want to make sure that I have matched, not, sorry, not matched the tempo, but I, I have selected the data that I want to use for this sample. And we'll do this again, so don't worry. All right, if I right click on this, we'll zoom in here, and I come over to convert, Notice again, I've done this before, so it also shows at the top of my, these are things I've used recently. But if I come to convert, convert to new sampler track. This is an easier way to get this to work than what we did last week. So convert, so I right click, convert, convert to new sampler track. And I'm going to get this 
dialog box. And it says create zones. So what we're going to do is we're going to create zones or places on the keyboard I can play this sample because now it's not just a piece of audio that I can manipulate in the arrange window. Now I can play it on a keyboard is what I'm heading to. So I have two choices, regions or transient markers. Now I have one region. So if I create a zone from one region, it's going to allow me to just play that and not map it in different places or not uh, slice it to have different sounds that will play at different points on my keyboard. Transient markers is going to slice the audio at every large piece of audio called a transient. It's going to automatically analyze it and say, here's a transient that should start another sample. Here's a transient that should start another sample. Now, some of them are going to be good and some of them are going to be silence because look over here on the audio wave, there's silence. And between those transients, it's going to create a sample and it's going to be a sample of silence. So, but it's quick and easy for us so we don't have to really think about it. So, so you're you choose transients. I'm choosing transient markers. Yep. We'll talk about one shots in a minute, so don't so worry about that. So you do choose that. Yep, you choose for this one we choose transient markers. Now, I can name it. So since I already have one in here cuz I did this to to test all this out, I'm going to call it just you call you can name yours different, but I could call it, you know, my initials, CTK's Fabulous Drums, whatever you want to call it. But this is where I can name that sample. And it will come up in the sampler with the name that I give it. You want it different than what it originally was. It doesn't have to be. It will take the name of the thing you dragged in. But you can imagine if you downloaded something from YouTube, it might have a pretty weird name to it. Or if you had it in iTunes and it wasn't identified, it might be like, oh, one Jimmy jumps the jive dot blah blah blah. I mean, it could be really weird. So name it what you want it to be. <laughs> now, trigger note range is literally the keyboard range that you want to do. And I'll just tell you that most drum patches will start at C minus one. C minus two is two octaves below C zero on your keyboard. It does not matter what this range is for you. But it, putting it at minus one kind of puts it higher on that keyboard. On our little controllers, you just have to keep hitting the octave key to find out where that is. Um, it doesn't, if you need it to stretch for a big distance, you certainly could leave it at C minus two, or you could make it even smaller than that. So I'm just making it a more reasonable range. I know I'm never going to need this to go all the way up to G8, but we'll, we'll take a listen to what that does. And then it tells me this is what it's going to do. OK. If I click OK, it creates an EXS instrument with 51 zones of a maximum of 116. So I can create a 116 zones. It didn't analyze it to find that many from 51 selected transient markers. So of that loop that I put in there, that piece of audio, it found 51 transients, and it will create a sample for each one of those transients from transient beginning to the next transient beginning, which you'll see in a second. It will also include a MIDI trigger region, which I'm going to show you what that does. So as long as we have all that set up, I can click OK. Now you, you kept Oops. G8. Yep. I can move that if I want, but for now I'm just going to leave it because it's, it, it is going to create a full 51 for me. So So I didn't, the only thing I changed was C minus one, so I don't have to octave so much because we're going to use the on-screen keyboard, which is a bit of a, a pain to keep hitting octave. I'm going to click OK. Look what happens. It mutes my region, and it creates a MIDI track with MIDI data. Let me zoom out here. And that MIDI track, when I click on it, if you notice, over in the inspector, now has an EXS24 synth loaded. And if I open that EXS24, where'd it go? Can I zoom back out? Oh, it didn't open. Notice when I look at the display, it says CTK's Fabulous Drums. So EXS24 is the sampler. The patch has been loaded. Now, don't worry about all this stuff that it can do. We're going to look at that over the next couple of weeks. 
So like I said, you click on the track, or the MIDI track it just created, and over on the inspector, if you don't see inspector, you have to click the I key to get inspector. You'll see it says EXS24. There's, there's three parts to that. There's a power button, which turns it on and off. There's a settings tab or button that shows that interface. And then you have a drop down where you can go and change it to something else, which we're not going to do. So let's see where you are. play this my audio is muted but my MIDI track is there if I hit spacebar well the beat plays like normal because my MIDI track if I double click it my MIDI track has each one of those 51 transient samples mapped to a different key starting at C minus one. And what it's doing, hold on Jack, and what it's doing when I hit play is it's playing one right after the other continuously, so it sounds like it's playing the audio, but it's triggering a MIDI file for each one of those 51 samples that it just created. Does that make sense? So like, in, in, instead of being like an actual drum loop, you know, it, that's not actually the drum, that's the U. Well, it is, but it, it's not like you can't like edit the note and make like a drum sound like this. It like so that's like the sample rate, basically. The so each one of those is like a sample that's made. Well, let's go a little bit further. How can let's let's test this? So while I'm clicked on this track, let's bring up musical typing, which is Command K, and let's see what the MIDI does. So right now it says on mine. Yours might be a little different, but mine says octave C two. I'm going to change my octave, so I'm down to C minus 1, and then I'm going to click these keys. Or. So what it's doing is each key on the keyboard on the controller has now been mapped to one of those 51 samples. When this plays in order, it sounds like the original drum loop. But now I took that sample and now I can go. So maybe I want. Now I'm using the sounds of the loop to create individual triggered, triggered, individual triggered sounds. So here's, that's a very light transient. That one might not be very useful. But as I go through these octaves, now notice that there's going to be repeats because in the original audio, turn this back down. In the original audio sample, there were repeats to this beat. We didn't just choose one, like, we didn't choose two beats worth of material. We chose, chose sorry, eight measures. So there's a lot of repeat in this sample. So if I solo this and I go here, 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 let's come back here and do, why do I have that muted? Okay. So if I play this original audio sample, so there's kick, 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 kick. So there's a lot of repeat data that's been mapped. But that's OK, because we just want to see how that works. And it's been mapped starting at C minus 1 for 51 keys, including at points.
double kick. We have double kick, double kick, double kick, double kick. Starting at C1 on a C C minus one. <laughs> Uh, and then you're saying yes. it's 57, so you would have 51. to shift the keyboard up. It would have to shift up. Why would it have to shift up? Well, no, it doesn't shift up. Well, it does. It did it for you. Well, C minus 1 is shifting up one octave oh, from the default. In this case, since it's not melodic, don't worry about where the note falls in, in right. relation to, okay. to pitch. It's okay. just a controller position. Okay. C minus one is no different than, you know, than I could have mapped it to A two. It doesn't matter musically where I put that. My point is, is that this audio region has been split, and this MIDI data is now mapped in EXS twenty four to each key between C minus one and C and G eight. No. So, so let me do that for you. You don't have to do this because I want you to see how this works. Let's do that exact thing. So I'm going to create a new audio track, but you do not have to do this because I'd rather that you um, watched along and I just did what I didn't want to do. Err. Oh, this keyboard is just... All right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I really want everybody to, to watch this so that you know what I'm going to do on this. Okay. But I just have to fix this dumb thing with logic. Uh, really bugs me. And it's not Zoom Focus Track. I just don't get why it does this every freaking time. But you do First, have to create an auto, auto You don't? Track. No. Let me do that. Let me get rid of it. Let's do it without. Okay. So, All right. Don't just watch me. Don't follow okay, along. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my stuff, okay. and I'm going to go to media. Let's go to digital audio because Jack said, what if I bring in a song? What will it do if I bring in a song? So here's that. Uh, so it's that tune we've used before. I'm going to drag it into the gray space. Ooh, that was weird. I just went over the speakers. I better watch that. So I dragged it in. Oh, I got the mute tool on. I dragged it in. Let's do the same process to this. Okay. So here's a big tune. You're going to see we're going to have trouble. So if I do this whole tune, right click, convert to new sampler track. Now there it is on the top because I've used it before. And I'm going to get, it's going to analyze because it has to find the transients. And it's going to come up here and give me the same thing. Now watch up here. Okay. Transient markers. I can rename it. I can remap it create EXS 116 zones from maximum 116. So it went, it found 2,671 transients in this song. It can only map 116, so I'm going to drop out a bunch of them. But I'm going to, it's going to start from the beginning of the tune. Okay. This shows you that when I do this process, my sample needs to be of a smaller length yeah. to be able to do it. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a little bit weird because we're, we're doing this with melodic content. But I want to show you what is going to happen. So I'll zoom back out. It's going to take a little bit to do it because it's a pretty hefty little sample. Whoa. And uh, I'm going to research this today because I know this is going to bug me. So here is what it did. This is 116. There's 116 transients up to here, and then it stopped. Okay. So the original audio is this and I should have trimmed that it would have been better if I trimmed that but okay and if I play the MIDI region because each one is triggered individually plays just like the audio file but what this allows me to do is go to the keyboard
So each key, that's the sample for F. So there's your question, Jack, answered. No, it doesn't separate out all the instruments. It gives me that transient of that tune at that point in time. At that note. So if I go really high. Oh, oh, so I can just go up the keyboard and still play the song. I will, yep. Ah. Didn't want to record. So, yeah, I'm just playing those. So I'm just showing you that each yeah. transient snippet is mapped, and I get that transient that plays only. And when I hold down that key, that's the sample that plays at that note. Maybe that's useful, maybe that's not. But clearly, I need to use a smaller piece of sample, smaller piece of audio, to start that process because it chopped off almost the entire song because none of that, it already found too many. I can only do 116 of them, which is a lot. If you need more than 116 in your sample, you're probably pulling too big of a sample to begin with. You probably want to start smaller. But notice that it's not changing, oops, it's not changing pitch at this point. It's mapped the tune up the keyboard, so that's all I'm doing. It's keeping tempo, but tempo is so irrelevant at this point. I mean, I could use those samples in slower tunes or faster tunes. I don't have to. It doesn't have to be at the tempo of the original because the sample is whatever that little snippet is. So the key here is... Am I choosing the right source material to make that controller position on the keyboard, if I'm using a keyboard, to make that actually worthwhile? That's kind of the hard part. Yes? So if you wanted to create a keyboard that would play violin, you would play a scale or a chromatic scale. Well, this is different. Okay. Now you're talking about how do I change melodically as I play up and down the keyboard, and that well, we're going to that we're gonna do. That's how you would create you could, but that would be a really slow way to do it. Oh. So, but we'll look at some presets and how it's done for the ones that we play already. that are already in there, yeah. and we'll see what those look like. But let's start okay. basic. Okay, let's do, so I'm going to get rid of these because that was just a, a thing that I wanted to show you. Let's do one more together, and let's do something different. So now I'm going to go back to my files. And I'm going to import, or drag in, I should say, my Trifon Growl. Wait, was that fine? So I'm dragging, dragging that to the gray space. Wait, wh where? Remember, that was the second. You had two loops that I wanted you to oh. copy to your desktop. Um, and I'm going to mute those two there. So I'm dragging that in, just like we did the first one. Okay. Now. Should we line it up with bar number just bring, one? Yeah, bring it to the front. Now, again, this sample has been kind of mapped to the grid already. So if I was using a sample that I'm just bringing in, to do this process that we're going to do. I would want to select the piece that I want to use. I would want to decide on my tempo, and I would want to option drag or time stretch to set that to the proper measures. But as you notice, this is set to be another 8 bar. And if you look at them, they all start at very even. So 5, 7. This has been prearranged for us already. So this has already been mapped for us. They will not line up so nicely. In this technique, they need to be lined up nicely because we're going to use the grid to do something for us. Does, does that, not yet. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to zoom so that I can see my quarter notes. So here's one, two, three, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, beat two. Now, nice feature here, switch to scissors, and I'm gonna, are we good? Are we there? So I'm switching to scissors, I'm holding down, let me zoom in, holding down my option key, and I'm gonna click, notice it shows a little plus sign, I'm gonna click on that first quarter note grid. And what does that do? It chops everything up into a quarter note region, a quarter note sample, a quarter note clip, whatever you want to call it, for that entire thing that I brought in. Now, if I, if I don't go to the first one, um, I could get different results depending on where I go in the group. I, I thought up that. here it was the bar number two. Bar number two. No, you zoomed in because where you are, yeah. If you're zoomed in farther, you'll get to the quarter notes. So now you see okay. that you see that you zoomed in for okay. that next one. Okay. So I'm option scissors to cut those into all those little individual regions. Now, it still plays. It's just this growly sound. Well, it did it automatically. I just cut it once. Option key cuts everything to the to the. I started at quarter note, so it cuts everything to the first. Note. So, but I'm, I've got this over here like this. Uh, you can do it. Well, you can't. You should do it for your normal tool. Oh, really? Instead of because you can't really do command option. That would be a whole other okay. piece of magic. So in this one, you want scissors. And they're all kind of connected, but without the little eerie cord that goes between them. You know, guts. Now, this is a great time to be able to do, do my quick key commands, TT. So I don't have to go back up to the screen to change my tool. T to get the menu, T to get the pointer, because I want to make sure that I have all of them highlighted. Because now, instead of transients, I'm going to create a sampler track from region. So I'm going to right-click, convert to new sampler track like Jack wanted to do before. But this time when this comes up, I'm going to select regions because I already have my snippets created. This is a saying to the computer, don't do it by transient, do it by what I wanted. And I want each one to be a quarter note in length. They can be a half note in length, they can be a measure in length, they can be 32 measures in length. It's whatever you want them to be. And then they'll map to those places on the keyboard. So now it says, okay, it's going to create EXS instrument with 32 zones because that's what we cut up. There were 32, well, that's eight bars, four quarter notes to a bar, so 32 segments. And it will also include that MIDI trigger region that we had before. So as long as you have regions, you can name it what you want to. So maybe I do CTK's growl. And then I'm going to click OK, and I'll come over and help you here and then 
as I zoom back out, there's that MIDI track. And we'll play both of those together. So you see that they are exactly the same. Okay. When I went to PC, it went back to the pointer tools. Yep. That's but what it and then didn't highlight them all. Nope. You have to do that yourself. So I'm going to zoom back <coughs> out. And I drag across all those clips to make sure that's in there for us. Yep. And then you right click and convert to the new virtual track. Make sure you're on regions. Rename it. Map it if you want, but now since we did C minus one the last time, we're on C minus one now. And okay, so it creates the MIDI data. If I play the MIDI data, it plays the same track. The nice thing now, if I command K when I'm selected on that CTK growl track, now, well, I don't have anything on that one. But I will have some, depending on where I am and what my volume is. I hear Jack's more than I hear mine. Eh, it's freaking out on me. I've noticed up here, because of the HDMI connection, if the sample's too short, by the time the computer figures out to play it, it's already over. So that might be the problem I'm having with this one up here. But Jax is working. <laughs> oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> or it's just that I'm dumb and it didn't work. Pretty useful, maybe. It gives you a way to trigger pieces from an actual controller. Instead of having to do all that editing yourself, if I wanted to use these in last week's way, that's a lot of work, putting those in, copying, pasting, looping. It's a lot more work than sampler track, play it in, and create MIDI data. Um, kind of makes sense, able to think about it. You gotta kind of get in there and see what the heck am I gonna use to do this. Now let's take a look at um, a different sound. So I'm going. Does that does that clear that up? I guess, but not really. Like, can, like, can we cut it into like all those segments? Yes. So you're saying if so we did that ourselves, each one of those segments became something we play on the keyboard. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. They're all individual mm -hmm. things that we play as we go up and down the keyboard. You could do that. But we're going to kind of look at that in a minute. Because so far we're just taking audio, slicing it, and playing the audio back to exactly the way it was, same pitch and all that stuff, in one spot. Now let's create a new track, a new software instrument track. So as I do that, it's going to come up here. And notice it, as I highlight that track on the left-hand side in the inspector, what it says for me is EFM1. It might be different for what you guys have. So you notice over here in the inspector it says EFM1. I'm going to change that. I want to change it to EXS24 because that's what we're working with. And when I click on that in the inspector, same place where we were before, Twenty 
for a sampler and notice we have well, there's we a mono and stereo we don't need, multi. We don't need this here. We it doesn't matter. You can use it. Whatever. You, you can get rid of it. Let's, let's change your piano to EXS 26. Okay. Is that for you? You didn't know all this? Yeah. Okay, good. Just to let me know if it says, like, wait a minute. What did you do? Did he want? He wants stereo. We could do mono, but uh, we could do multi output. We'll get to later. We'll talk about what those mean. So I'm going to change it to stereo because what I want to do is I want to look at a preset. So here's a new instance of EXS. Make sure your other tracks are currently muted. I'm going to just mute those just in case. And I'm going to go to the EXS 24. Now you can make this bigger by clicking and dragging. And I'm going to click on that little where the display was. Remember from before we, we said here's the display and here's all the different things including my ones that I just re created. What I want to do is I want to look at one that's already there because I want to show you the, the data that we can do. So I'm going to go to... Uh, wait, wait. Okay, so we're on our new instrument three. Okay, so let's make... Yep, you got this up there, so let's make that bigger by just dragging the lower left-hand corner so we can actually see it. Okay, so we're going to click on where there's no name. That's where we load our... Are all the presets that come with Logic, and I'm going to go down to Pop Strings, not Chinese traditional, like I know Jack wants to. <laughs> pop Strings. Let's do. Uh, let's see. What do I have in my notes? E E X S Strings Two. Say that ten times really quick. You probably get. You'll probably get in trouble. I don't know. So it's going to load. So it's going to load. Now don't worry about all the stuff. Here's the sound. Oh. It's been loaded. Oh, yeah. If I go to my keyboard and I play, that's pretty low. That's not going to be helpful for me. Notice if I hold down a key that has some length to it. We're going to talk about why that's doing that later on. But I have a length to this. This Not all samples are junk, junk, junk. Even when we create them, they could be a long sample, like Beth was saying, a long violin sound. And when I map it to the keyboard, I could have lots of long sounds. I want you to look here. Next to where this says EXS strings, we have an edit button. Everybody with me? No. Next to where we have the name on the, on the sampler, we have an edit button. Click right, that. But, but now I, I can't. Um, so mine, mine doesn't play. So is there a button? Oh, mm -hmm. well, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what it's pointing to. So it's in output. Uh, you don't. The system itself isn't set to that. So go to system preferences. We get the so this edit window I want you to see because I want to look at what's happening here. So click that edit button right there next to the name on the EXS24 and it brings up this mapping window. This is this is the zones. Now you're in the zone. Notice it has a list of samples, that's what those are, and there's zones, and it shows a keyboard and it shows little squares for where certain sounds are mapped to. As I hit C1, two samples are mapped to C1. So we can get pretty complex. The samples that we're going to create are going to be like single layer samples. 
but the samples that you have in EXS24 already available could be five, six samples deep. So this has two particular samples and they're highlighted here. One is left, one is right, probably for us because we're in a stereo image. And it's actually got a little movement between them. So I was going to say, like, you know, because sometimes, you know, if you, if you, like, map a song or something from Studio One, I was trying, you know, I didn't really know how to use it. But I tried to use it like a sample and just try to sample, sample like, a song or something from Studio One. I think it worked like this. When you play a song, like, down this way, doesn't it, like, kind of slow the song down? Well, we're not there yet. We're not, we'll get there. We're not there yet. All right, so this has, you're noticing what we just did in the other the other way that we sampled. C1 has a sample. D1 has its own samples. E1 shares those samples. Now you're hearing pitch variation because the sample is the same. F has its own sample. G shares that sample. Do you see how that display looks? So yes, in a minute, we're going to take a sample and we're going to map it in the entire keyboard and you're going to get a pitch and a rhythm change that goes up and down the keyboard. But as you look at this sample, it, it's pretty much a sample for every two or three notes because F sharp is in there as well. Those all use the same sample. And the reason why we hear change is because this pitch column shows, yes, adjust pitch. If I took those off for those notes, Now they're all the same. If I put them, oops, sorry. If I put them back on. Wait, wait, wait. What, what did you just do? So I'm playing F1, and it's saying these are the two samples that, that play when I hit that key. When I play F sharp, it does the same samples. But of course, we hear a difference in pitch because the sampler is adjusting it for the next key. And that's what these pitch this pitch column does here in the sampler. And if I take that off, F, F sharp, and G play the exact same note. And why would you take it off? Well, like maybe for a drum sample, I want to have the ability to play a faster rhythm. Like I want to play a hi-hat between two keys. So I want the exact same sound on two different keys so I can go. Instead of trying to go on one key, so I can map the same note across uh, with, with or without pitch change. We're going to do that in a second with our own little sample. But this is a pretty complex sample. Look at all the samples that make up this instrument. But once I get to C, well, B5, these are all the same sample because you're probably not going to use them. So they didn't waste size by having these samples be individual. Yeah, it's out of the range of the real instrument, so unless you're doing some weird stuff, why would people bother? But, you know, we might. <laughs> Do we get what that's doing? I just want, I don't want you to get confused with this interface, but I want you to know that that's something that's available to me to do. When, when you Because those are the one; those are the zones that were created okay. for those two samples. I wouldn't really worry about the zone number. Okay. I would worry right now that there's two samples playing at the same time. They are mapped to that key. We'll talk about there where it says here key, what that means. But that this one plays C and C sharp one. So there is pitch changes and you see the the range the low key is b0 so it actually plays b c c sharp the low key is b0 the high key is c sharp 1 and those can be changed look i can change them okay and this is all if i want to the synthesizer ex yep well the excess is the synth string 2 is the patch or the sound that's what it is we're going to get more you know, we're going to get into this more. It, this is a, I'm sure in other software, Studio One and 
FL, there's probably something very similar. Might have other functions, might have some auto pitch mapping, might have some auto tempo mapping. This one does its thing the way it does it. It's kind of old, so it's maybe not the best. We'll, I may show you how we do sampling in alchemy in here. Um, those in the synth class will see alchemy, and that is a new synth, and it does a lot more than what EXS can do. But I think for most of us, this can be pretty complicated to begin with. And there's a ton we're not doing yet. So you with me so far? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, wait, where's my thingy here? So let's see if I go to, can I do this with that? Yep. Look what happens when I hit, when I hit the A key in really shortly, really short, I get the sound of a shorter duration. When I hold down the key, I get a longer duration. We're going to look at our sample, and we're going to talk about this thing called one shot, which allows me to freak it out. So one shot will say, and we'll take a look at that when we map our next sound. This one shot column says, as soon as you hit that key, play the entire sample. I don't care how long it is. Don't stop playing it just because you took your finger off the key or you played another key. So in effect, this would freak out on this sound if I did it. I could hit, da, 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 and they all play for their length, and it would be this big cacophony of sound. Now the length of this is being determined elsewhere. For those in the synth class, it's being determined right here with the uh, sustain. So it's going to go for a long, 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 long time until I release the key, and it just goes for a long time. And hitting this one shot basically in this synth says just play it like forever until I turn that back off because it's kind of a, a looped sample. Um, we'll look at what that means. Without one shot, the point here is I can vary the duration by the how long I hold down the key. Could be important in the samples that you use. You might want something to go and the next time to go So having one shot off allows me to vary that duration. Uh, doing all right? Uh, you can. Well, okay. You can change the way all that works. You're just showing us that you click on it does not have sufficient accessibility. Don't put that one. Okay. I just, just click clicked there on and get rid of that. But I just clicked there. Well, I would go from a All right, so just kind of think about this. Um, I'm going to get out of this, and I'm not going to save. Okay, so we get rid of the, the editor. Yep, get rid of the editor. Jack, get rid of your editor. Let's go back to EXS24. Don't save. Don't save. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to the display where it shows EXS strings 2. Click on it, and I'm going to choose no instrument. Okay, we there? Not edit, but the name where the name of the instrument is. No instrument. It takes everything out of there. Now, if, technically, I should have no sound, but what it gives me instead for those in synth class is a sine wave, which is a nice sine wave. Kind of a Gregorian sine wave. Anyway. Are we there? Do we have nothing in there? Are we all good? All right, I'm going to click on edit. Okay, what is this window called? That what window? That is the EXS24 sample. I'm going to come back because I don't want people to get lost. So as soon as you're ready, let me know. Okay, so, uh, and what can I use as an audio file? Uh, well, I guess we'll just use like little bit of discarder or something. While you're doing that, I will search for an appropriate audio file. I want you to go back out to the, hold, sorry, I'm trying to do two things at the same time. Uh, that won't be in there. 
I don't think I'll have anything in there. There's your sine wave. Let's just see what we got here. Maybe there's a horn. Oh, that'll work. All right. Okay, so back to logic. Okay, I'm going to click on the, uh, with the instrument name now has nothing there, right? And I'm, oh, sorry. No, I'm not. I'm going to click on edit. I already did that. I'm going to click on the edit window. Okay, so you still have no instrument. No instrument. I click on the edit window. I have no zones. I have no mapping. I have nothing. Okay. Are we, you with me? I'm going to create, what's that? It says instrument two, 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 seven. Then you're not at no instrument. Just giving you a default. Don't worry. We, there's nothing in there, so it doesn't really matter. It's just like a um, an open space. Okay. Are we good? Now I can go in here and create a zone and drop in an audio file if I want to do that. So I could go to zone, new zone. It creates a zone. It gives me a key range. Can we do that again? Across the top, it says zone, new zone. You with me, Jack? You with me? It creates a zone. Tells me, we'll talk about key in a second. Look at key range. It says low. We shouldn't have any sound yet. No. Uh, if I look at key range, it's set for the maximum. If I click and drag, I could change that. Notice what happens in the display down by the keyboard. We're going to leave it the way it is. Pitch is going to allow it to change the pitch. We'll look at that in a second. We looked at one shot before. We'll check that out again. There's a lot of other stuff in here. But I need a sound because I don't have a sound. So if it says name, where, where it says name under zone one, if I click, I could load an audio sample. So let's do that. Load audio sample. So Takes me to the, go by name, on the zone, there's a little drop down arrow. Click on it, load audio sample. And then I didn't, okay, the good. should see, but. So let's see, sometimes in Pro Tools, sometimes that doesn't work. Let's see if it does here. Yep. Command shift C students media. I'm going to make this bigger. I'm going, the place I'm taking you to today is soundtracks, sound effects. Uh, where was I? Instruments. Where was I? Yep. Uh, so look up here if you need to see where I'm at. Media, sound effects. Sorry, media, soundtracks. SFX. <laughs> sound effects, instrument, horns, and I'm taking the first one. Because it's an 8-bit file, and sometimes logic doesn't like 8-bit files anymore. Yeah, I think it's not going to work. That sound's not going to work. Let me find a different one. Are you playing it? it it's going to keep giving you that warning. Oh, maybe not. We'll try to use it. I'll get to the full eight bit warning in a few seconds. Yeah, open. It's probably going to give you a little warning as soon as it now plays something on your keyboard. We'll just get rid of that one. All right, so. What we did was to map the brass sample to the entire keyboard. And it's changing pitch data. If I go way up, it's not just changing pitch data. It's changing speed as well. Because listen to the duration lower. and listen to the duration higher. 
So you have to realize that this is going to create a change in pitch and tempo. So if I'm using a drum beat, this is probably not where I want to do this. So I'm using a special effect, a synth sound, something that I know I want pitch variation and I don't care about tempo. This is a great way to do it. Do you mind speed it? Good. Do you want like my sample right now? Like I don't know really. I didn't know that my sampler could. I didn't sample one. It probably could do a lot more, but. Well, so can this. We're just scratching the surface. So let's let's just stay with this for right now. I want you to be able to have these different ways to get a sample into this instrument depending on what you want to do. Now here's the thing that you can do with this. The range can change. So watch up here. This key range can change. I can't zoom in that far. If I change the key range, we saw before that it changes the position with that blue box on the keyboard. So I'm going to take the C2 and I'm going to drop the lower level to like C3. So I'll have one full octave, ah, there we go, one full octave of sound. So if I play, it changes the note because pitch is on. Now if I set it to one shot, because right now, I have a, hold on, I have a duration that I can uh, adjust by how long I keep the key down. But at some point, the sample ends. One shot will play the entire sample, no matter what I do to the key. They're still playing until they all end. So if I need... Does it default to a, a reverb or something? No, it has nothing to do with reverb. It has okay. to do with the length of the sample. And why does it default to a sustain? It doesn't. The length of the sample, here's the length of the sample. There, now it's over. If I hold down the key, there's the length of the sample at that position on the keyboard. When I change pitch, the duration is going to get shorter because the pitch is going up. It's speeding up the sample. Pitch is getting higher, duration is getting shorter. All I want you to know is that if I don't want to every 80s song ever written. If I want the sample to play all the way through, no matter what I do on the keyboard, I hit one shot. It, all those times I triggered it, it played the full length, the full length, the full length, the full length. Might be useful in something where you're like, ooh, yeah, do, 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 ooh, yeah, do, 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 by hitting the key once. But if I want, do, 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 I want to be able to control that duration. I just want you to know it's there because if I don't hold the key long enough or if I don't make my MIDI note in the piano roll long enough, it's not going to play the full sample. See right here? Key range. Yeah. Click and drag up or down. Now you can also go to the keyboard itself and if you can find the edges, you can trim it just like a video clip or an audio clip. Now, I'm getting weird artifacts because I'm zoomed in. The computer itself is freaking out. So if I do this, it'll go away. Every once in a while, you're going to get that same warning because I chose a bad file for it. You just freaked out on me. You just like took the owl and wobbled it. Yeah. 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 I just want to make sure that you, do you see how it changes too? Yeah. I can't say which one of these techniques you're going to need for what you do, but I want you to use the sampler instead of the way we did it last week to create a tune. So each track is going to be a sampler with its own sample mapped inside of EXS24. And then you create what you want by using MIDI data by playing the individual sample. Very different than what we did last week. Although some of you did that as well. Uh, not everybody used that technique. Now, there's a lot of other stuff, and I just don't want to – my list – I'm about halfway through my list, but I don't think I want to go any farther because we can do more. Now, what I did not talk about first is key. So I want you to look here where it says pitch key. This is not saying that this is in the key of C. This is um, 
what they call like the the main key. I forgot the term for what uh, the main key for where this is mapped to. So right now my oh, I can't remember. I just lost, I just went out of my brain. The main point where this sample is loaded, where I'm going to hear it as the actual sample at pitch and tempo, is the. It's not the main key. Ugh. That's how it sounds before I did anything to anything. If I play on a different key, those are pitch variations of the original key. As I move where it's mapped on the keyboard, that does not change. I can change where that is, and then it will map to a different pitch on different keys. So notice that just because it's, no, it's on C3 doesn't mean in musical terms that that's a C. It depends on my sample. So my sample, the, the horn player could be playing a D. And if I map the key of the sample to C, it's playing a D on C. So for those that are very musically inclined, it might be beneficial if you know what your sample is playing to move that key. Now it's to D. And if it's playing a D and it's on D, it might be easier for you musically. data of the file. We can do that, but for now, I want it just to map. C3 is the default, and if I want to change it, I can change it. For most people, it's not going to matter. Uh, if it matters to you musically, then you need to okay. be able to figure that if out. If it's on C3, is if I play a C, will it play a C? It'll play the original sample. Whatever pitch it was in the sample is what's being played when I hit that C3. Hold on, Jack. So here is the brass wave. If I play it in the finder, whatever that is, that plays at C3. And when I go to C3 in Logic and I play C3, where did I go? I'm too far zoomed in. So, so now I map to D3, sorry. So when I play D3, plays the original sample. I don't know what note that is. I don't have that kind of pitch well, recognition. Well, if I play C, it doesn't. It plays the original sample. Don't think of it as playing a note value. The letter on the keyboard doesn't matter. Yeah, the letter doesn't matter. You're just saying, take original sample brass and make sure it plays the original one at that position. Go lower, slow it down, and make the pitch lower. Go higher. Well, they allow 
You can use your mule to carry a mule. So you use drugs to buy a mule. have several ways to get samples into your sampler. Jack, Jack, let's stop, okay? And but not in China. Ah. I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, let's listen here guys because I don't want to have to give you all kinds of extra private stuff if you if you know how to do this then great. So the first the first thing we did, remember, was to bring in an audio region. We said, we decided what that link would be. We decided what that tempo can be, time stretch, whatever, like we did last week. We right clicked on it, create a sampler instrument. It automatically mapped to EXS24 and gave us that data on the MIDI track. Now if I wanted to record stuff, I would hit record and I would start playing on my keyboard and it would play those sounds. That was one way. The second way, we brought an audio file in. We did the same thing. We decided the length of it. We would time stretch if you wanted to match tempo. We took the scissor tool, held down option, went to the first quarter note click. We could have went to half note. We could have went to three. We could have went to measure. We could have went to, you know, four measures. And it would have made us slice that big. And it sliced the region into those sizes automatically. We clicked, right click, create sampler track. Did the same thing, added it to EXS24 on this track. EXS24 created an instrument using this stuff. I could play MIDI, could play all those sounds individually on different keys. Notice in both these cases, pitch never changed. It played that sample at that point in time. So those are two ways that you can get stuff for the tune that you're going to build. The third thing we did was to create software instrument track, select EXS24, go in here and, uh, come on, choose no instrument, so we weren't changing something that was already there, click edit, create a zone, hold on Jack, create a zone, load an audio sample to that zone and then if we want to manipulate it with the range with the pitch with the one shot that was a way that we so could work with that Yep, there's a little arrow there. I'm just going to reload this because I took mine away. Hold on, Jack. Because I want to show everybody, once this instrument is created, like uh, Beth pointed out, there's no name. This has not been saved yet. So if I save this instrument, it will ask me where do I want to save this. Now the default is the local computer in a place that Logic looks for for sampler instruments, which is not going to help us because it's going to go somewhere that we don't know where it is. So I would suggest that you go to your student drive and just so that this is backed up, because I'll explain this in a, in a minute, and if I'm gonna call this CTK's Brass, I'm gonna save that to my, David's, private folder. I'm gonna get rid of that. Now, if my instrument in Logic, if I have all those buttons selected, that instrument should follow the project anyway with that track. But I've had times where because of how we loaded a sample, it didn't keep the sample data with it. And if the sample's gone, then nothing's going to play. So I would do both of those. And then that way, 
So that's, that's in there. I already have it saved that way, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click Command S. Hold on. So then, look, it's saved. It's there. CTK is brass. If, theoretically, if I quit this project, which I forgot. I guess I put that in David's. So let's go here. And let me just show you this. If I come back here, private, here, uh, there it is. I open it up. It should load all my samples. And it should have... On the default, CTK's brass. Oops, I need the keyboard. There it is. So it should load and follow the project with me. Now we'll do it one more time so that we can see how to do that last method because that last method is a little bit weird. So remember, the first thing you did was to click where the name of the instruments are. So for you guys, why don't you save your... Save it to the drive because it can be like in a lot of different areas. Okay, so I don't know if it saves the one or all zone. All this is made up of all the zones, so it will save them. Okay, so now I, you can get rid of that window. Wait, wait. I kind of put in cardboard because I was a little less little fascinated by it, but but mm -hmm. this one, then I put in brass. That's fine. So, but they'll which just one? layer. They'll layer. You have them both set to at different ranges, so they'll play it. So we have it. Okay, we'll go to no instrument. Nope, let's start early. Create a track. S create a new software instrument track. Well, we just create a new track? New software instrument track. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to scroll. I'm going to bring that up higher so we can see it. On the left, hold on, Jack. In the inspector, make sure that what's selected, not whatever synth comes up for you, like electric piano, click on the right drop down and make sure you're choosing EXS24 stereo, like I have up here on the screen. stereo good remember there's no see there's no instrument up here nothing's loaded so I'm gonna go to edit I have nothing there I'm gonna go to zone new zone right we with me you with me Jack you there Beth you there yeah. now remember under zone number one there's that name and that little drop down that's gonna allow me to load audio sample. 
So I'm going to click that. I'm going to navigate to a sound. So for me, I'm going to go back to those horn sounds. And I'm going to do foghorn. Doesn't matter which one. Are you finding a sound? Once you find it, click open. Now we're going to get that crazy, stupid warning probably at some point. I, I kind of lost the track. Okay, so sound one, like that. Yep, it's on your right. It's all highlighted. Just scroll to the other way. And now just choose something in there. Okay, you do Doesn't three, matter. four. Just what do you do before? Doesn't matter. Just choose any one. Okay. Yeah. And then choose something in there. All right, Jack, you, gonna, you got this, Jack? Jack, you have this? Okay, so now in the instrument, I can adjust the range if I want. I can have pitch or no pitch change. I can one shot or not one shot. I can change the key, what is it? The, I can't remember, the lock key? No, the, the oh, it's gonna bug me. The root key, that's what it is, the root key. I can change the root key if I want. I can change the where the position it is on the keyboard if I want, like I'm doing here. I can move that around if I want to move it to different positions. All that stuff is there. When I'm done with that, instrument save. Okay, so the instrument save. Navigate to your, call it something, then navigate to your student folder. So this is going to be uh, Foghorn so CTK. I'm going to navigate to students, private, and then I'm going to save. Now that instrument is saved. It has my name. I can get rid of this edit window. And now that instrument will be there. It will update as soon as I, as soon as I play something. It's just weird because it's that 8-bit sound. Doesn't sound like a foghorn. It sounds like a fart. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. For each track, I gotta go through that process for each sample that I use. One of those three ways. It's up to you. It will change, don't worry. It's say you want to like put together a song and you just like that one like short little note or like two or three notes, you have to bring it in the thing, cut that out, export it out, just bring it in like that, or can you play it as a piece in the no, you put it on a track, just like we did. You put it on a track, and say I want this part. I can make that a convert to sampler track and just have it and not do transients and do region, and it's just one region. Like that's exactly the one that I want. So I don't have to bounce. Or I just bring the audio in. I trim it to what I want, create a sampler track with it, and then use it where I want on the keyboard. And that, and then that could pitch change too if I wanted it to. Does that make sense? Yeah, that was another thing I was bringing, like just like one guitar strum or whatever into the... You could. You could. So let's just say that this little piece, like I need that. So like you're saying you have a long tune, but you want the... Like the... Uh, I don't know, like there's like a guitar strum at the beginning of a tune. I, this is the easier way than to bounce yeah. that out and bring it into EXS is to convert that to a, a track, which is going to be hard there. Convert to sampler track there. Use it as a region. Map it. It'll map it to the whole keyboard, but you can narrow it if you don't need to change the pitch of it. And, and that's the easier way than find it, bounce it, software instrument, open the edit window, bring it into a zone. That's much longer. There's other... There's a couple other ways that make that quicker, but I just don't want to do more. Okay, so you've got your, um, uh, where did you put your fog Uh I was in sound effects, didn't want to bug it, I believe. And uh, instrument.
Does that make sense? You good? So, I was going to show the assignment. The assignment here, number two. We've learned a little bit about what EXS24 can do with samples. It's time to get creative. Using sounds that you want in your tune, you will create a two to three minute song that uses source material from at least five different songs, which is very easy to do. You choose the songs. They can be digital files, download captures from YouTube, whatever. Depending on how you start and sample will determine if you set the tempo first, if you start with a drum track, or alter samples on the fly. There's no minimum number of samples. The more you use, the more interesting the song will be. There's a minimum of five recordings, so I guess there is a minimum of five samples. Uh, that's pretty easy to do. You probably will have a lot more than that. I just want to see what you can you get through that process, because the next thing we're going to do, which we didn't even look at yet at all, which takes this to the extreme level is looking at what the heck does all this stuff do we can alter that sample using synthesis we'll look a little bit at that all right see what you can do it, it, it nobody 